guys thank you so much for coming back to my channel today is that time again where we do a review slash recap on lovecraft country this time we're doing a review slash recap on episode five of which is entitled strange case now before i get started i do want to thank everybody who tuned in on our live discussion on amazon prime's the boys we did episodes one through three for season two thank you so much for coming to the silver sides channel if you guys are not subscribed to him yet make sure you subscribe all right so we start off episode five with Ruby waking up as a white woman. A white woman who actually looks like Ardell from, I don't know if you guys remember, but episode one, but she's clearly trapped in this body. So she wanders around town and in shock of everything and confused and she ends up bumping into a young black kid. Unfortunately, the police pull up at that time and they both have their hands up um, because that's the normal reaction for Ruby as a black woman, but this time she's in a white woman's body. The police just pull up and accuse this young boy of giving her trouble and Ruby steps in and tells the officers that he was only trying to help, but they were beginning to beat him up and then they just ended up taking Ruby with them and putting her in the police car and taking off. Uh, while she's in the police car, she's looking at her hands and she's wondering like, how the heck did I wake up like this? Like, what just happened? And the police are expressing to her that her husband is looking for her, so they're driving her back home. And she's like, no, I can't go back there. Don't take me back there. So the police handed over Ruby to William, of whom carried her inside the house. And William takes a knife and uses it to basically, like, pull off her flesh, which was very disturbing. I'm like, what is going on, sir? We then see that Montrose is sitting in a chair looking at his hands, of which is stained with Yehima's blood, which you oughta, sir. You committed cold-blooded murder. Letty and Tick walk in and ask Montrose about Yehima. They see that she's gone, so like, where is she? Montrose says that she's gone along with Titus's pages and you could just see the look of intensity in Atticus's face. He was furious and he just attacked Montrose, like completely beating him up, punching him in the eye. Like the boarders in the house had to come in and pull Atticus off of his own father or uncle, whoever he is to him. And this is a slightly scary moment because the amount of rage that Atticus had, that's something we've never seen before. But it was so bad that Letty had to go down in the basement and approach him with a baseball bat just in case he wanted to get crazy with her. But he was in the basement digging for what he may hope to find pictures that Letty may have taken of Titus's pages. But a great way to start off the episode. So back to Williams, we see that Ruby has reverted back to herself again. William tells her about wanting to replicate the metamorphosis of butterflies that butterflies undergo within humans and in working with Hiram Epstein, of which is really Christina working with Hiram Epstein, because Christina is William. Guys, I've been saying it, I've been saying it, I've been saying it. Uh, William was able to temporarily undergo metamorphosis and that's the exact same thing that Ruby was able to experience. But with the metamorphosis that Ruby went through, you could tell that she was really deep in thought about how differently it felt to be treated as a white woman versus a black woman. Now, William doesn't make it easy for her to just leave his house. He leaves a vial of the elixir right next to a huge wad of cash. We then cut to a scene where we hear Intazaki Chingari, I think her name is. Um, it's the four colored girls who have considered suicide piece. We see that Ruby did in fact take the potion to turn into a white woman. Then cut to a scene where we see Letty telling Atticus about the pictures of Titus Braithwright's pages, but she hasn't developed them yet. So while she's developing that, Atticus is clearly ashamed of his violent action against his dad, his behavior, but he thanks Letty for stopping him because he knows that, you know, it probably would have gone far, but Letty was pretty concerned with the fact that if she hadn't have stopped him, he probably would have ended up killing Montrose. And cue the sex scene. Meanwhile, Ruby has transformed back into herself again and she's taking a bath <laughs> while singing Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea. Ruby confesses that she contemplates what is harder, being a woman or being black. Ma'am, I think I know the answer to that question. Ruby says that she's tired of being interrupted and that seems to be a key word within this episode because we hear it more than once. In the next scene, she transforms back into the white woman and applies to Marshall and Fields, but she applies under the name of Hillary Davenport. The manager, Paul Hughes, uh, offers her the position of assistant manager after being impressed by her resume. But that was a terrible interview, sir. And then she transforms back into her normal self again, and it's a pretty nasty and painful transformation. Ew. Next, Montrose is staring at the front door of Sammy's complex, waiting for him to answer the door. 
um, he looks lost and he looks burdened by you know everything that has gone on and of course the fact that he murdered Yahima we will not forget that they have a moment together of which I believe it was mainly to relieve Montrose of the stress that he was experiencing so we cut to a scene where we see that it's Ruby slash Hillary's first day on the job as the assistant manager at Marshall and Field Company she wastes no time in questioning Tamara on how she was able to get the job and then she finds out that Tamara was underqualified as she only has like a seventh grade education. So in the art of pettiness, she takes a lotion bottle and slams it right in front of Tamara and says her hands are ashy. Don't you know if I was Tamara, I would have. Hillary is disappointed that Tamara got the job, but Hillary slash Ruby is overall disappointed that Tamara is underqualified and her white coworkers simply hate the fact that a black woman was hired. So while they're expressing all of their feelings on what's going on with Tamara and the job in general, Hillary's three white co-workers express how curious they are about the south side of Chicago. As Hillary shifts in, we see that William is waiting outside for her. And this excites and also surprises her white co-workers. William tells her to hold off on her taking the elixir as he needs her to do a favor. Inside the car is a box and so Ruby slash Hillary takes this box, opens it, and finds that there's like a maid outfit in it. We then cut to a scene where we see Ruby unhappily dressed up as a maid and serving deviled eggs at a party that is only for and occupied by the Order members of the Ancient Dawn. Captain Lanchester is there and you can overhear someone discussing Horatio's missing pages. Ruby ends up meeting with Christina. Christina gives her this amulet that she wants her to plant in Captain Lanchester's desk. On this amulet are markings and a symbol of which we've seen before. Uh, those same markings and symbols were on Atticus's robe in episode one of when he was involved in the ritual. And we also see the same symbol back at the Winthrow house on the elevator. Now, Christina is William because she insists that he is the rightful heir to the lodge. We then see that Tick has a dream of his ancestor, Hannah, of whom is escaping the fire that happened at the Braithwright Lodge, the Braithwright House. Uh, she says something to him, but we can't necessarily hear it. There's no sound coming from her mouth. And then Atticus catches on fire. And I could only think that he was experiencing Titus Braithwright's death in that moment. Tick wakes up from his dream and we see that he is trying to decipher the language of Adam. We then learn that his middle name is Samson and Samson is also the name of his grandfather's and I believe that's on his mother's side of his grandfather. But they show a symbol of that picture um, of the picture that Atticus was studying and we see that the same symbol was on Christina's amulet and it means protection. Atticus then reveals to Letty that Montrose killed Yehima. Letty then is in shock and she rejects the research that they're doing and claims that they are playing with the devil's tools and inviting evil into their life. Atticus reassures her that it's what they do with those tools, it's what they choose to do with it but they're just studying it. We then see that Ruby plants the amulet into Captain Lanchester's desk. But then just as she was about to leave, which I think she should have just left, don't be curious, but she heard the moaning of a man who was in the closet, the same moaning that we heard before in the last episode. She wanders over to the closet, opens the door, and there it is, a man, a bloody man, looked like he's been beaten up pretty badly, probably hasn't eaten, and clearly he smells. Um, so she's in shock, but then she can't leave the room because she hears Captain Lanchester coming in. So she quickly gets into the closet with this man. She covers her mouth and her nose, and she also uses her other hand to cover the guy's mouth. And so they're in the closet and she's listening in on Captain Lanchester's conversation with the other man who entered the room with him. We overhear Captain Lanchester plotting against Christina to get the Ori and to also find Horatio's pages. He takes off his shirt and we see a strange pigmentation like on his chest, uh, on his arms. And my theory is that that body is not his, it's a black man's because he also worked very closely with Hiram. And we all know what Hiram was about with kidnapping black people and experimenting on them. 
We then go to the next scene where we see Hillary is going off on Tamara, expressing, well, Hillary slash Ruby, um, expressing that she has to work twice as hard to accomplish anything in life. And we all know that that speech is given in that moment because Ruby is in shock of what she saw the night before and what she had to do as well. Paul, the manager, comes over and notices Hillary talking to Tamara and in an effort to quickly cover up, Hillary tells Paul that Tamara is going to be taking them to the south side of Chicago. We then cut to Sammy's apartment where he and a few others are getting dressed for a drag show, uh, of which is very prevalent during that time. And this goes back to the prohibition period and continues into the 50s. Montrose is just sitting in the corner with his good eye as the other one was punched out by Atticus. Sammy approaches him as everyone else is pretty much making fun of the fact that they've never kissed. We can see that Montrose is not yet ready for that as he kind of slightly turns his head away from Sammy. Meanwhile, Hillary, aka Ruby and Tamara and their three uh, white co-workers are at the south side of Chicago at a bar. The co-workers wanted to experience black culture, black music, and black men. So Tamara is pulled up to dance while Hillary excuses herself outside to re-up on the potion, but the vial ends up breaking. She then witnesses Paul sexually assaulting Tamara and luckily Tamara was able to actually get away. We cut to the drag show of which Sammy is performing what he mentioned earlier with Montrose, La Custa Migratoria, and I hope I said that right. Um, we see Montrose is lost in his thoughts during this time. He's not sure of how he's going to navigate life with his hidden sexuality. Among that, I'm sure that he's stressing over the fact that he killed Yahima. And I don't know if he's at this underground club to get away from the reality of what he's done, but eventually you could tell that he had this moment in dancing with his friends, uh, this, this moment of liberation. And this, by the way, was a beautifully shot scene with all the color of the lights and also the wonderful costuming. And this is where Sammy and Montrose have their first kiss. One has to wonder, why did he kill Yahima? And will Montrose be coming out to Atticus in a future episode? We cut to Ruby of whom is covered in blood and she's back at William's house waiting for William. Now she expected William to walk in, but instead she got Christina. But Christina sits down with Ruby and tries to relate to Ruby's experiences. And Ruby tells her about the difference of, of treatment with white women in society. That then sort of prompts Christina into asking Ruby, who are you uninterrupted? So in the next scene, we see that Hillary slash Ruby is putting in her two week notice at Marshall and Fields. Paul is clearly unhappy about this, but then Hillary lies to Paul and claims that she's quitting because she's attracted to him. And she feels as though it's not appropriate to be attracted to him while she's working there. So she comes on to Paul. Paul is all excited about this. He's loving this. She takes off his belt, ties the belt around his neck, pulls his pants down, takes her heel off her foot. And well, you know the rest. As she's doing this, her Hillary skin is peeling off and Ruby is finally revealed to him. And this was all in defense of what happened to Tamara. She wanted him to know that a black woman did it to him. We then see Letty and Tick. Tick tells Letty about the girl he met in Korea. This is the same girl that we've seen in his hallucination in episode two at the Braithwright's mansion, and also at the beginning of the pilot episode where he was dreaming. Letty tells Atticus that she doesn't wanna be with someone if it's not special, and Atticus, so cute, assures her that what they have together is just that. And the big reveal happens, Christina is William. She comes home to Ruby of whom witnesses her transformation as she comes out of William's skin to finally reveal herself. For our last scene, we then see that Atticus is continuing to translate uh, the language of Adam and he's shocked as he discovers the word die as he translated the symbols. He hops on the phone and a woman's voice is on the other end and he asks her, how do you know? And we hear the voice say, you should have listened to me, of which I'm, um, yeah, he's talking to the woman that he had met in Korea. I really enjoyed this episode. It was fantastic. I love the fact that the title was named Strange Case because indeed it was. There was so much to uncover and there was so much being revealed in this particular episode. Now, I wonder if Montrose is going to muster up the courage to tell Atticus about his sexuality. I wonder how far Atticus and Letty's relationship is going to go in future episodes. 
Will Ruby and Letty face each other again? So far, I'm loving Lovecraft Country. This is something that I'm going to continue to watch. What about you? Comment down below. Let me know. Be sure to follow Movie Vibes with Desiree on Instagram, and I will check you guys later. Bye.